Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks. In this video, I'm gonna show you a cool tip and trick you can use to get better control over your low-end frequencies in Logic 10 by creating a safe bass. So a safe bass is kind of, it's a term that's come out in a couple external third-party plugins. It's this idea that if you're gonna have low-end frequencies in a stereo bass track, like let's say it's from Serum or some other soft synth, it's safer to keep those the low end, anything from like maybe 100, 120 hertz down, or even the sub range, right, in mono. So you can actually do that with a native plugin that comes with Logic 10, and we're gonna check that out in this video. So let's dive into a session and see how this works. All right, so first, let's check out this demo. All right, so there's not a lot of tracks in this demo, but that's by design. So you guys can see and hear how this safe bass idea can contribute to positive outcomes quite quickly in the mix. So we got a vocal chop right here. Oh, we got some chords coming from Serum and electric bass. We got uh, some brass stabs and then the drums. So. This will also, the safe bass will also make your tracks more mono compatible, but it'll also just tighten up the low end and it'll give it more clarity because what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, okay, from this frequency down, I don't want the stereo imaging being, the stereo image being as wide. I want it to be more narrow. So you can do that with the directional mixer inside of Logic. It's pretty cool. So this is what it will look like by default. It's set to left right. There's also a mid side mode as well, which we're going to be using in this example. So with this chord sound, there's a lot of low end in it, which I want because this demo doesn't have a dedicated sub bass, so I'm fine having some low end. And it's not the most mono compatible sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the input to mid side. And I'm going to select split on. This will give me a crossover frequency where I can designate between the high and the low frequencies. So with it set how it is, it should sound pretty much identical. It might just be a little bit more narrow, right? So I'm going to keep the high where it is for now, but let's take the spread here and take it all the way down to zero. So now what we've done is we've, we've from 200 hertz down, this low here is going to be almost entirely monophonic. So let's turn it on. And you can both hear and see the difference. Check out the phase correlation meter. Off. On. Right? It never crosses into anti phase. So that's kind of cool. Now we don't have to go straight mono, right? I'm just trying to tighten some things up and I can change the frequency. 200 is a little bit high. I'm going to go about a hundred down. Now I typically wouldn't do this in isolation. I'm doing that to show you guys how this sounds. So I would strongly suggest doing this and kind of honing in on the crossover frequency and how much spread you want or don't want while you're listening to the mix. So to show you this mono compatibility, I'm gonna drop another EQ after our directional mixer, and I'm gonna basically just take out everything except the lows. So actually just recall the default here, and we're just gonna do this. So if we see our phase correlation meter here, very, very mono compatible, right? We're, we're almost up to the, in, to the positive one. So let's turn our directional mixer off. Right. That's a huge difference for the low end. So it's a really cool tip and trick, guys. I don't know if a lot of you are aware of that the directional mixer has that crossover and that mid-side split option, but it's a great way to tighten up your mix. All right, so if you guys have any questions or comments, post them and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you liked this video and you wanna see more like it, please hit that like and subscribe button.
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.